Welcome back to the Masters of Materium. My name is Virtual. I am the CEO and co-founder of Mom. I am here with Grill, our raid master, our COO, and I'm here with Alum, the master of coin, our CFO. What up, gents? How are you doing today? Doing good, doing good. Doing good. Looking forward to this podcast. Yeah, so we're going to talk about deeds. We're going to go through all the deeds and talk about their potential utility and value in the game. Nothing that we say is financial advice, of course. So please take everything we say with a grain of salt. But we do have opinions and thoughts and theories, and we're going to share them with you today. So Grill, let's get rocking. All right. Let's start out from the small steed here. Start with the homestead. There you go. One homestead. So, Alan, what's your thoughts on the potential value and utility for a homestead? Who should want a homestead? Because none of us own one, actually. Well, if you don't own any other deeds, those people would probably want a homestead. For someone who has, you know, any larger deeds, the homesteads have far less value. With that said, you know, if you're looking to buy a deed and the only deed you can afford is a homestead, then this is probably what you're going to buy. You know, it'll give you a place to sleep without having to worry about inns, give you a place to cook and some minor production capability to, you know, get a little head up on the free-to-play players, at least, or the renters. Grill, walk us through the map here. So we're seeing a visual with four different plot types. So walk us through that. Again, we're, let's just assume nobody's ever seen sure. any um, of the dynamics in Miranda's. Yeah. So you got the yellow plot here is the 10 by 10. It is the going to be the homeowner's spot to sleep and store some stuff and maybe throw some parties. Then the green plot is for farming. You can grow wheat or barley or cotton or whatever else you want. The next pink uh, plot here will be for any stands, any five by five buildings that are Miranda's, and the blue one will be some kind of decoration. I'm not really sure exactly what those are going to be yet. They haven't discussed them much, but those will go there. So just so everybody's clear, there's going to be room for one five by five building on the homestead. Is that correct? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So the 10 by 10 is basically the person's home in this diagram. Awesome. Yeah, so basically a farming plot, a free bed, a place to cook, and a space for a five by five and a space for art. That's basically the homestead. So Yeah. Yeah, I think it could be a good early access ticket into the game. I also think you might see clusters of these pop up and form almost like a little village around maybe some areas with resources or farming, some some low level hunting ground, stuff like that as well. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. Up next, we have the outpost. So you can see it's quite the upgrade over the homestead. Yeah, so Alan, what's your opinion on the value of an outpost? So an outpost certainly has a lot more potential over the homestead. I like One other thing I'd like to mention just in general with these deeds is that the yellow plots are not exchangeable. So you can't put like a 20 by 10 building on that. It's the deed owner's home and that's how it has to stay. Same thing with these like farming plots and stuff. You, you can't put buildings on those plots. Those are just for farming or just for ranching. Same with the decorations and stuff. Um, in terms of the uh, the deed itself, it's a little limited on the 10 by 10 potential. I honestly think it should probably have a second 10 by 10 because you can't be truly effective with it um, with just the one 10 by 10. The farming potential for the size of the deed, I think, is really quite good. The 5x5 five is, again, quite good. The defensibility, it only has the one entrance, so it would be very easy to defend. And um, that's why you're likely going to see these more on the frontier, far away from the, or at least as far away from the towns and villages and stuff as you can to expand into new territories. Grill, what's your opinion on the outpost? I can see people using outposts as kind of mobile little places to recharge or refresh. Say you send out a, a mining team, they go out, they mine a bunch of stuff, they can go drop an outpost nearby, store some of their stuff, or even possibly craft it, have people come pick up some of the stuff they mined or other goods that have passed by and take those to other towns and villages. Which you bring up a really good point. So what our understanding is based on what Mac Michael McCarthy's revealed is that the bigger the deed is, the less options you're going to have. So for an example, 
the Archduke, Mr. Grill, will have less plot potential places in Mirandus where you can play Zach because it's obviously a massive deed. Whereas the Outpost will have probably a lot more options. And the value of that is, like you said, you could put it potentially on an island. You could put it potentially next to a mining operation, next to a high value cave, dungeons. So I think there's going to be a lot of value to the outpost. But as Alan mentioned, because of the there's only one 10 by 10, I think that two outposts next to each other could be very powerful because then you'd have two 10 by 10s and you could potentially put a cemetery on one of them and something else of, of high value in the other 10 by 10 and maybe not be maximally optimized in terms of all your stats, but be, be good enough to, to push into some dangerous territory. So that's one of our, of our thoughts and plans at mom. All right, let's go to the next one. So got a farming handle and this is when the deeds start getting quite a bit more serious. Yeah, so Alem, talk about food in general. Um, obviously, Mom, the Masters of Mirandus, that is our main focus as a guild. We are the number one food asset holders and will be the number one food production company or guild in Mirandus. And we're very excited about food. So share your thoughts in general. Yeah, so the Farming Hamlet's kind of the, you know, the in quotes, the bread and butter, um, somewhat pun intended here, of our operation. They're very effective in terms of cost to production capability, probably more so than any other deed. Like you're getting multiple 10 by 10s, you're getting a ton of farming, you get a little bit of ranching, easy accessibility everywhere, and there's a decent quantity of them. Like these are kind of going to be, you know, the powerhouse and backbone of the entire farming economy and the food supply chain in general. I see substantial value in the farming handle and it's something um, in mom that, you know, we could always use more of. Like, I don't think it's possible for us to have too many farming hamlets, if nothing else. Yeah. If you have a hamlet and you haven't joined mom yet, please contact us, join our discord and we will be great allies. Trust us on that. Grill thoughts on farming hamlet? Um, I don't have too much more to what Alan said there. You kind of covered it all, but th these are going to be the powerhouses or backbones like you said of the almost the entire game since food will be required to basically function these hamlets are going to be incredibly powerful yeah so let's talk about the plots for buildings so there's three 10 by 10s four five by fives obviously the selection of the 10 by 10s is going to be really important alum again for a farming hamlet what's your opinions on the best buildings to place so every farm, now it doesn't necessarily have to be on, say, this farm. Like if you have multiple farms close by, you could kind of have one farm, have one building another using and then both kind of alternating between them. But if you have a solo farm, a mill is almost like a necessity, whether that's the 5x5 five five grain stand or the 10x10 10 10 mill. Um, a granary, again, almost an absolute necessity, whether that, again, is the 10x10 10 10 or the simple granary for the 5x5s. Five five you do have some ranching there as well. In order to function with ranching, you're going to need a barn. Given that you only have four ranching spots, I think a barn would be relatively inefficient, especially since there's no 5x5 five five barns. So if you had, like, say, two farming hamlets next to each other, my assumption is one barn would probably be more than adequate to, you know, encompass all of that ranching. Other than that, you can also potentially have buildings related to food, things such as, you know, a bakery, a brewery. You can even work up a little bit from that and you maybe even have some something like a tavern or a camp to that extent. But uh, mostly this is going to be, you know, food related for sure. Uh, to expand on that a little bit, I, I would think if you own a farming hamlet, you best to find possibly other people with hamlets where you could coordinate with them and place buildings that would work best. And maybe you find someone with a ranching hamlet, he has the barn and you can send your cattle there and use his building. Or you, he can use your mill on your farming hamlet to uh, mill some of the grain that he grows on his ranching, which is coming up next. Yeah, which is one of the strategies at Mom. So what we're going to do is we have a lot of players and members that have hamlets, we're going to help cluster them around towns and villages so that 
they don't need all the building plots and all the buildings. We'll be able to supply the processing power through the towns and villages so that we just put the hamlets around it and we truly maximize the output. So, but yeah, let's go to uh, our favorite. And this is the asset that we are the most dominant in, in Mirandis, which is the ranching hamlet. So first let's talk about a really important fact, which is ranching plots are about three times rarer than farming plots. So Alan, talk about the importance of beef. Yeah. So ranching plots, you know, there's going to be a few mainstays. You got the, the butchery chain, which is most likely going to be, you know, things such as beef and poultry and such. You're going to have dairy, which is going to be related to sheep and cows. Sheep is not something that I've ever had milk on, but uh, that's in the description. So I'm assuming it'll be in game. And then you're going to probably have tannery related stuff with, you know, the hides for cattle and, and the like. With regards to the ranching plots, the ranching hamlet is quite unique amongst all deeds simply because it's the only deed that has any substantial ranching plots. All the other deeds either have no ranching plots or very few ranching plots. Like, for example, every single deed in the game has at least a farming plot. That, you know, the sole farming plot being on the homestead. But ranching plots are very, very highly concentrated in ranching hamlets. And mom has a substantial amount of ranching hamlets. So the ranching plots, I think, is a huge opportunity simply because, let's say, the hot meal served at, you know, a tavern or some of the higher tier inns um, gives you the best food buffs. Kind of the general assumption is that you'll need kind of food from all the different lines of products, and this will be the hardest one to obtain. Meaning that if you're focusing on trying to corner a market or control the economy or focus your profits or anything of that nature, this is probably where you're going to want to focus your resources. In other words, join mom because we already own 18% of the ranching plots. <laughs> um you know, here's what here's what we need in the game. We need beef tallow so we can do the best French fries on earth. I don't know if you ever guys have ever had French fries or sweet potato fries cooked in beef tallow. It's I think it's the ultimate grill. You're the they're, food master here. Do you agree? <laughs> no, they're by far the best things to cook them in. Maybe not the most healthy, but uh, tallow fries are hands down number one. Um, yeah, Grill, any other thoughts on the ranching hamlet? Mm, not too much more to add. I say Elms is doing a good job covering everything here. I said the ranching plots are exceedingly rare. None of the other deeds have any more than I think eight is the max. And this has 33 all by itself. So. Now, there's something interesting about this diagram, which is the deco plots at the entrances. Any thoughts on what kind of decorations you'll be able to place at entrances? I'm assuming the deed posts and things like that but it could be it could be gates um maybe you put um some cattle horns there for a ranching hamlet yellow yeah, any thoughts yeah so i like grill thoughts with the cattle horns and stuff i'd like that personally um if this is related to the outpost at all the outpost on the decoration plots um had like lanterns those hanging lanterns and there's also a decoration plot between the five by fives, which could be, I don't know, maybe a, a water well or a statue or a fountain or some some other thing of that nature as well. Or even a light post. Yeah, uh, that'd be reasonable. Yeah, they've got some cool art that is on the site. And maybe or one of our upcoming podcasts, we can go through a lot of the art because yeah, I think a lot of the diagrams and designs on the website are probably some deco pieces. So let's move on to the next one, Grill. Okay. Well, again, big step up here. This is the first village. Uh, basically looks like two farming hamlets <laughs> put together. Yeah, so Elam, walk us through this diagram. What, what are we seeing here? So, yeah. So here we have a village of the farmer. And as Grill alluded to, it essentially works out to be almost equivalent to two farming hamlets in terms of production capability. A little shorter on the 10 by 10 compared to two farming hamlets, but otherwise almost identical. I, I like the layout. It's nice and simplistic, easy access through either way. 
it's very focused in terms of where you would have the five by fives. Um, you know, whether it's going to be, you know, five by fives potentially milking stands next to the, uh, the cattle. And then you potentially have some granary or simple granaries or whatever at each different section. You have four, like a simple granary could be at each four section of the corners. And then you also even have some decent production. Like you could have uh, some basic stands coming in there. You can definitely have like your full complement of 10 by 10s for food production. Like this is very a potentially self-sustaining -sustain food production kind of mecca. And also it's a village tier. So, you know, the, the buffs you're going to potentially obtain from running this would be at maximum capability from a food production perspective. So yeah, this is kind of like the uh, pride and joy of the food production here. So let's talk about buffs. Um, Grill, maybe talk about buffs and what we know about them in terms of the deed buffs, because I think that's a really important point. Yeah, it's something that I was going to, I was going to mention that we haven't we brought that up, but each of these land deeds should come with a title, a buff, and I'm not sure at what level you start to be able to hand out buffs, but you should be able to give out X amount of buffs to friends or to people working on your deeds to increase whether it's their production or speed or maybe a few other things. They haven't gone into a lot of detail other than the fact that they say they'll exist and you'll be able to actually hand a few out. Well, what we do know is that the buffs will be zone based. So if, let's say in the Archduke, whatever that zone is, if you buff, let's say, uh, Illumini, we will be buffed when we're in that zone. So yeah, that's, and that's one of the things that we want to offer our top players is the ability to hand them buff keys. So it'll be all probably key driven and. I don't know how many keys we're going to have, but yeah, we're excited to buff the high value players. <laughs> but when, at one point that Alan brought up is this is basically like two farming hamlets. So in terms of how to value the village of the farmer, and again, not financial advice, but maybe you want to look at the price of hamlets and compare that, compare two hamlets to the price of a village of the farmer and make a decision that way and then join mom after you buy one. <laughs> Um, on the bus themselves, it's potential that the village of the farmer buff will increase productivity on that by more than what two farming hamlets would, would uh, equal out to. You also yeah. do get more 10 by 10s if you have two hamlets. You get two extra. Uh, so there's a couple of different things to factor into that. Yeah, the buffs are definitely a big question mark. All right, let's go to the next village. Yeah. Our first noble deed. Moving away from the uh, cows and the grass onto some actual building production. So Elam, talk about the value and the utility of the Village of the Baron, in your opinion. So the Village of the Baron, girl is alluding to the first of the noble deeds. So you should get an actual title at the very least, you know, Baron, you know, whatever. Um, in terms of its potential use cases, it does lack a large building, so it's not going to have top tier production. With that said, it has a lot of 10 by 10s and 5 by 5s. And I can see these kind of being used kind of like as the super outpost for that general region out at the you know the frontier this can be kind of like the point where other outposts could go to or could act as a major outpost self-sustaining outpost next to like a larger dungeon or a high traffic area um they're really quite well designed as well like you you can go from one side to the other um direct through so Throughway and traffic would be really well. You have a nice little kind of central congregation of all the areas around that one decoration plot as well. So you can kind of picture where people would be meeting up and trade would be happening and interactions and stuff. I like the design of it. It's a shame that's a little bit lacking in the pr total production capability. Grill? Yeah, pretty. We discussed them being uh, like almost like super outposts. I do agree that the lack of a large building is also a little disappointing here. There's also a little bit of lack of the farming, but I guess this is not really what this deed is about. I think this is a place where people can come sell some of the stuff that they get where they're grinding without having to make possibly a trip back to a larger village or town, restock themselves and head back out into the field again. But yeah, I think Elam nailed it. I think this the real value of the Baron is the super outposts. So yeah, I think outposts and super outposts are going to be really important and valuable for 
deep hunting and raiding and pushing into dangerous areas and being able to to res and come back and buy food and sleep and buy potions and all the things we're going to need. So, and interestingly, this one has 12 deco spots. So it'd be cool if the deco spots would give us some level of buff or give the deed some buffs. Like I don't know if the decos are going to be just purely artistic or, you know, add some micro buffs and have some utility that, that would be really cool. Maybe if you could, you know, infuse some materium and the decorations, you could get some, some little buffs. Yeah, but based on some of the decoration locations within the towns, it would make sense. Like, there's one right in the middle of all those five by fives, right? You could see that buffing all those buildings, kind of in that semicircle there. If that was the case, yes. All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, first, large. Uh, do you with a large building on it? The village of the Viscount. Yeah, so I own one of these. Elam, do you have one of these? I do. Um, yeah. Interestingly enough, this was the very first gala asset I purchased. So, you know, it's a good place in the heart of us. And with Grill as well, he bought a large um, inn large that inn, we were originally yeah. going to place on this village of the Viscount, you know, from our humble beginning. So, yeah, I, I have a fond uh, spot for the village of the Viscount at the very least. Yeah, so what's your opinion on the power and utility? So I think, again, first off in the layout is great. A uh, major upgrade from the Baron. First off, this has some ranching plots, which the lower tier um, non-farming related deeds have. It has quite a large concentration of 10 by 10s, 5 by 5s. It has the first large plot as well. Also, in terms of just his value, compared to the cost of other deeds, this is a very high value. Like, it's very concentrated for the price that Gala was purchasing. And the main reason why it was the first NFT that I purchased. I think it's a very good high-end starter deed. So let's talk about the value of large plots because, yeah, I think a lot of people would look at five by five, 10 by 10s, larges, grands and majestics and assume that the grands and the majestics are the most valuable. Now, they're certainly going to be incredibly valuable, but there's something special about the large plots, which is that there's a ton of top tier buildings that the top tier level is a large. So, Ella, maybe talk about how important you think the large plots are in general. Yeah, so I was saying we were going to have a large inn initially just because at the time inns were supposedly going to sleep was involved with energy regen and stuff. That's, of course, changed. Now it's just hit points related. But um, the large spots, top tier crafting is going to be huge. They're also very limited for the top tier buildings, like 10 or 20 total buildings for most of them. And those buildings can be put on many different deeds. So for example, the citadels will likely want, you know, a top tier of each of the top tier buildings, like a potion shop, the outfitter, the jeweler, archery, etc. But those buildings also need to be put on all of the noble level deeds as well. So the large buildings I see as having substantial value, considerably more than the tiers below that. And I can also see a large building kind of be somewhat deed defining. So for example, let's say your large was a large mill and you had a bunch of farming hamlets surrounding it. Your, your farming hamlet would, or your village of the Viscount with a large mill would probably attract farming hamlets because they would want to bring their product to mill at your, you know, large mill or any other large building as well. So. Uh, I can see it kind of giving a theme to your town as well. Grill, any thoughts on the village of the Viscount? Oh, I am saying great layout. It's how we kind of started. Our original plan was the village, our large inn, and maybe a couple other buildings. And things have gone quite wild since then, to say the least. Like I am was saying, uh, whatever large building you put there will probably be the kind of the theme of the town. I, I agree with him 100% on that. This, yeah, this was also my first deed that I bought from Miranda's. So after that, it was all, <laughs> I couldn't stop. But uh, yeah, my first, my first purchase and excited to, to use it and produce some awesome things.
Yeah. Because of the value, these were the I think the second feed to sell out in the store when when the market was really going crazy. Uh, I think a lot of people saw the value in these. I probably will continue to do so going forward. So up next, we got the Village of the Earl. So the Village of the Earl is kind of like a buffed up version of the Village of the Viscount. For the value increase, like this was 50% more cost-wise on the store than the Viscount, but it doesn't offer a whole lot more. Like it still only offers, you know, the four ranching. It doesn't offer a whole lot for any additional larges. It still only has the 20 by 20 house and it's like an extra... Uh, you know, building or two. So the value increase was quite poor. And as Grill was alluding to previously with the Viscount, the Earl was like the last of the noble deeds to sell out simply because the value proposition per the you know price that was being sold on the Gala store didn't appear to be as good. With that said, I think it's still an excellent deed. Like you're going to have a lot of power with a village of the Earl oh, without right. question. Realistically, anyone who owns a village is going to be in, in rare air. Yeah, exactly. There's only 20 of these, and this game could potentially have millions of players. So you, you take out the actual initial store value of these, and then it looks fantastic. It's just compared to what was surrounding it. It didn't seem like a good value at the time. Nothing to add. Let's go to, let's go to the, this is a major jump. Now we're going from oh, the, yeah. the towns. Leveling up again to the marquee. I mean, let's just talk about, again, the, the differences maybe between villages and towns, in your opinion, that we can get into the specifics of the marquee. So right off the bat, all the towns have less quantity available than the previous deeds. It's a big step up going to a town. They're all much larger. They all have many more plots in total, whether that be farming or large buildings. And the, some of the other deeds, of course, having grands and such. Um a town starting at the marquee would kind of be like a major economic center for a zone for sure with uh, some you know again some of the higher towns being a larger economic center for you know many zones but this is the starter point for towns a very respectable deed in all regards and substantial production capability you have enough buildings to kind of hit a little bit of every single potential supply chain, although to a lesser extent. So somewhat self-sustaining as well. Uh, nothing less than a very respectable deed. One thing we haven't talked about is in-game, the sheer size of these, based on that one video where they were in kind of what they, what they called the playground, and they had the size of, of uh, all the blocks. These are just going to be absolutely massive. <laughs> Starting from the towns up, even some of those. Some of the uh, other deeds, some of the villages, especially the village of the farm is also really big. Uh, but in terms of actually in-game, you know, I'm, I'm with Alan on this. They're going to have quite a bit higher production than anything below it. It's got two large buildings. Not crazy about the layout just because it's my OCD and it's not symmetrical. But other than that, this is a, a, quite a significant asset for anyone though. Yeah, I own one of these and I'm excited. But has anybody calculated the square meter size of these deeds. I mean, we could actually do it pretty quickly, but um, yeah, they're pre they are pretty big. I mean, it's, it's each square here is a five by five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's a 20 by 16 times 25. So it's like 8,000 square meters plus a little more on the sides and the and the corners so yeah you know that's that's a pretty big that's pretty big so yeah it's going to be significantly sizable in the game which is just going to be great i think alum actually calculated the size for all these seeds right uh, i have i don't have that in front of me at this at the present we we also have at least made some of these deeds like in game more or less to scale or at least scale in relation to other buildings and these things are massive like it takes a long time to go from one side to the other yeah that's that's something we share in a future pocket i know you made a village or uh, town of the duke uh, yep. in valheim which is massive gonna, and it's only a quarter to scale are we, are we going to share i think we should share the the image right oh Do you have that image here? uh yeah just give me a second to load it up yeah we can we can i'll switch to the duke here and we can talk about it and i'll i'll, I'll Hold that image up here. Just give oh. me a minute. Yeah, let's go to the Duke. Okay. 
All right, Alim. Talk about the Duke. We're both Dukes. <laughs> well, we're, we're all Dukes to some extent, with Grill being, you know, the Super Duke, right? The Arch Duke. But obviously, this is kind of my best asset that I hold is the town of the Duke. As a result of that, you know, obviously a you know strong place in my heart and as such. Great layout, tons of production capacity, three larges, tons and tons of mediums. Of the noble tier deeds, this was the very first one to sell out. And interestingly enough, this was priced exactly the same as the marquee, despite it being a higher tier deed, having more of literally every single kind of building as well. And again, this is a reason why I purchased it. It just seemed like such a great value and capabilities that you could use from this. That and I kind of like the name of, you know, having Duke on my name as well. So a little bit of uh, vanity, I suppose. But yeah, no, an excellent deed. I well, also a flex? Yeah, a flex, <laughs> of course. If if you have that image grill, you can kind of get an idea of what this yeah, so looks like. This is an aerial shot. From inside Valheim. So, Ilan, yeah. maybe talk about what you did here because it's pretty epic. Yeah, so first off, you have to lay out the land, which is quite an effort to get everything smooth. Everything is exactly to scale. In this image here, you can see I, I made every building and everything as well. You see a storehouse, a stable, you see the five by five stands, you know, a cemetery, mills, uh, a temple, the Duke House in the center, all exactly the scale. Like every movement of the rock around it the windows everything is exactly as per the deed image that we have on our nfts lots of access large open spaces like you can fit you know caravans or whatever in through those gates easily very nice deed in general easy to access everything inside it see it feels very large like it's quite epic when you kind of look up at the uh, the house and such of the town of the duke and from there you can see everything that's going on in the town and the surroundings quite well. We definitely will have to have a podcast, say, inside a town or potentially That'd some hamlets great. and stuff. They kind of get a real feel of what Mirandus will be like when we're actually playing. Speaking of hamlets, just one other thing to share that you built within Valheim. Oh, you have a Okay. Yeah, yeah so, I love that up too. Yeah, so this is a farming hamlet. Again, exactly the scale and as per the picture on the farming house you even have like the uh, ranching spots and although from this zoom out you can't see but there's animals in the ranching spots all of the various food production each five by five based on the previous play tests have 25 different crops associated with them so every single crop for the entire deed as well exactly the scale you have a bakery a granary a mill so yeah, no, this, this will be essentially what it feels like. And we'd ideally have, you know, farming hamlets close to our larger processing facilities, such as, you know, the towns or the larger villages. Yeah. And this imagines it'll be four times that size potentially. Yeah. Yeah. This is only <laughs> one to four scale. Yeah. So, I have some, I have some more shots from inside that we can share them at the end if we have time. Sure. So we should get through the last couple of deeds here. I know we're running yeah, a bit of a print. Yeah. So something special happens when we get to the prince which is the introduction of grand plot so a let me talk talk about the value potential value of grands so grands the unfortunate thing the grands they're not top tier in most crafting professions unfortunately however they're still very powerful and they're also incredibly limited there's only um, you know, the two on the Prince and the few on the Archdukes in the entire game. So they're going to be very rare plots. And for the average person, this is probably what you're going to, you know, get up to in terms of maximum capability. The, the Prince also is very interesting because it uses a lot of space for decorations, like way, way more than all the other dudes. This is kind of like the, ex you know, the extravagant, you know, flex deed. <laughs> So not, not the most productive in terms of production capability. And again, because of that, it's sold out quite a bit later than the other deeds. But again, still an absolute excellent deed for anyone. And also, I should mention, the home is the first majestic size home. It's a 20 by 40. So major parties there. Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. More will be uh, doing some late night riffing and EDM, <laughs> some medieval EDM there. Yeah. Um, so something that's interesting to me too is the entrances and also the fact that the farming section is kind of isolated, I, you know, kind of protected a little more. 
Grill, any thoughts before we um, hop, hop onto your baby? Uh, I really like the layout. It's perfectly symmetrical. Uh, I think it's going to be very fancy looking there. It does have quite a few less buildings than the Duke does, but it does have the grands and the extra large. So that balances out a bit. But like he was saying, the reason why these sold out later is because they were twice the price uh, for potentially less production. One last quick comment on the grands and let's hop on to the Archduke. But yeah, there's only 12.7% of the plots to building ratios currently without factoring the Citadel. So it's going to be a very, very rare ability to land, to drop a grand building. All right, Grill, this is your baby. Let's queue you up and talk about why you're excited about being an Archduke. There you go. This is the granddaddy of all the non-Citadel deeds. Uh, has an extra grand versus the uh, the prince and quite a few more 10 by 10s and 5 by 5s and almost an entire, or exactly an entire farming hammer's worth of uh, farming. Now, it's tough not to be excited by owning something that's uh, 1 in 5 and super rare within what I think is going to be the best blockchain game around. This is uh, the only deed that has a moat, right? I mean, obviously, yeah. maybe the balls have had moats. I mean, can, can we put piranhas in the moat? I hope, hopefully, right? <laughs> and Piranhas, gators, and sharks. That or maybe make it like a lazy river. That's people like tube around all day. Nice. <laughs> Alem, um, any, any thoughts on the Archduke? I don't have anything to add. It's an incredible deed. It'll be the kind of the pinnacle of mom and the major trading center. Like everything's going to go through here in some way shape or another for any major transport you know to other kingdoms and such so this this is where it's going to start major raid parties you know meeting here etc and uh, we're all going to be partying in grill's home as well and riding around in his boat so i think it's great yeah, yeah. i keep weird hours so parties anytime you want <laughs> yeah it's got four four larges which is and three grand so yeah it's very powerful and Grill does have a grand cemetery, so he's he's welcoming you yeah. to his uh, cemetery, right? There's plots available. Yeah, if you party too hard, you res the cemetery and go right back to the party again. <laughs> all right, gents. Great podcast. Great job explaining all the utility and value of these different deeds. Hopefully, you enjoyed uh, the show as well. We'll be back soon with another podcast. We'll probably move on to buildings and then exemplars and move on to the next one. So, again, we are the Masters of Materium. You can go to mastersofmaterium.com. Our Discord link is accessible from the site. We are open to all players, all scholars, people that own deeds. So we're, we're wide open. We're very inclusive. We have room for everybody. Our goal is to have you know, probably 10,000 members before, before the game starts. So, yeah, we're excited. Grill, any final thoughts? Not much. I think uh, we pretty much covered all. So. Alum? I'm ready for the parties. <laughs> yeah, it's all about the parties, right? Um, no, I don't have any additional thoughts. I think we've covered everything in as much detail as we can at this point in time. Yeah, we'll, we'll do some updates as we know more, and especially with the Citadels. I think we'll probably we'll do entire podcasts on the Citadels once we know more. But uh, yeah, that's the big X factor. We don't know how many building plots the Citadels are going to have, if they have farming plots, ranching plots. A lot of mystery, but hopefully with the next playtest, more will be revealed and we'll be able to start extrapolating some insights and making some game plans. But anyways, thank you very much, gentlemen. Thanks for listening, and we'll see each other soon. Thanks. Take care. Later. <laughs>